Storm Tracker 9 weather with Chief Meteorologist Justin Stapleton. While things remain pretty quiet here across the West Coast, is just a monster enchilada of uh, high pressure sitting on top of us. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, back east, that's not the case. In fact, here's what we've got. Let's go out the storm tracker. I'll jump on the wall and show you what's happening with this next winter storm coming through. Uh, ice, the big potential for this one. Earlier today, you can see through Nashville all the way up in through eastern Kentucky. All that pink is anywhere from freezing rain to ice accumulation. Uh, that is likely going to be a real trouble spot in through there. Temperatures? Earlier today, earlier this week, we're in the 60s and 70s and through much of the uh, mid-Tennessee Valley and down the deep south. Behind that, we're talking 20s and 30s, so a major Arctic front moving through as this continues to plow its way across the east coast and is going to keep everybody uh, in through much of a deep freeze for the next, uh, let's say, four to five days. Now, that said, because the jet stream is dipping far south with that cold Canadian air, guess what happens? Remember, jet streams are fluid. One goes down, the other side has to come up. That's what we're experiencing right now here in the northwest. Even though we still have a little bit of low-level precipitation, mainly some light freezing rain and drizzle at times up around uh, Portland, here at home it's been fairly quiet. In fact, we got up to 40 today, woohoo! better than the 28 or 29 yesterday, and started off around 28 this morning. So again, both of those still below average, but getting a little closer to where they should be this time of year. We'll continue that trend as we get later on in the work week. A pair of 34s in Corvallis and Cottage Grove is sitting just above freezing. We're at 36 in Eugene, 35 in Roseburg, 42 out towards Florence, and getting chilly out into the mountains and central Oregon in the mid to low 20s so far. And even colder than that, teens and single digits in spots as you went back towards the south and eastern end of the state, 49 and 48 in uh, Brookings and North Bend, some of the hottest spots of the area, or hottest spots of the entire state today. So now with that high pressure and control, that's going to start to keep a bit of an air quality issue for us. Why do you say that? Well, because high pressure compresses the air down to the surface and because we have very light winds with high pressure, doesn't really stir the air mass around. So as long as this continues to stay in front of our weather forecast, which it will for the next, oh, let's say six to seven days, We'll keep some of those air pollutants trapped close to the surface. You want to get away from that, coast is one of the best spots to be. You'll see the nice offshore winds around 10 to 15 miles an hour, and the temperature is probably back up into the mid-50s as we get to Thursday and Friday, and no rain in sight either. Now, the Umpqua, one of the spots where they have air stagnation advisory out through about Thursday to 1 o'clock, so that is going to mean a bit of an air quality issue for the next couple of days. But even as we get into the weekend, you start to see some of that warmer air likely coming in from uh, the southwest and also off the ocean, warming us up. In the Cascades, we'll see sunny skies after a little bit of patchy fog, freezing levels spiking way up around 11,000 feet. Bend and Redmond sunny and temperatures in the mid-30s. So you say, well, it's dry. I don't know if it's good skiing weather. It's not going to warm up much. And so uh, it will actually be a couple of really nice days up on the mountains. And partly sunny here in the valley after we get rid of some of the fog. And I'll say we get rid of all of it tomorrow. Much better chance to do that by Wednesday and Thursday. But again, air quality probably going back into the moderate category tomorrow, which is not good but it's not necessarily something we have to be super alarmed about. But if you happen to have respiratory issues, this and that, tomorrow afternoon with the cold air and the pollutants, probably not the best day to be outside. All right, thanks, Justin. You bet.